while back ago, I did an Instagram reel explaining heat's effect on your body while you're training. Here it is. All right, let's talk about heat. Our bodies spend a lot of energy trying to get rid of heat. About three quarters of the energy we take in are used just to get rid of heat. So that means only 25% is used actually going into the pedals. So with that being said, when it's 105 degrees out, maybe that's not the day to do intervals. But when it's 75 degrees out, maybe that's the day to send it. In that video, I had mentioned that our bodies only actually use about 25% of the calories that we put into it towards pedaling our bikes forward. And I received some pretty strong backlash from one account in general, at Daily Bike Memes. Real professional there, buddy. And here is what he had to say about it. And to be honest, it kind of peeved me. So I figured I'm gonna make a video about it and prove this guy wrong. So here you go. The first time that I had heard about this 75% heat loss, just wasted as heat, is from Alex Hutchinson's book, Endure. On page 143, I'll read it for you. The human body, as Thompson's experiment suggested, is quite literally a furnace. It transforms the energy from food into mechanical work. And this transformation generates heat as a sometimes useful and sometimes inconvenient byproduct. The harder you work, the more heat you generate. The first rigorous investigation of the efficiency, efficiency of the human engine, which involved months of experiments on a professional cyclist named Melvin A. Mode in a Boston laboratory, <laughs> that's a cool word, in 1911 and 1912, recorded typical values of 20 to 25 percent. Here it is. For every 100 of calories of food you eat, in other words, you might get 25 calories of useful work and 75 calories of heat. As wasteful as that sounds, it's surprisingly similar to the efficiency of a typical internal combustion engine. There you have it. Boom. In the book, it's a, it's a book. Come on, you have to like believe what a book says, right? Alex Hutchinson doesn't laugh. If you don't believe me, all right. I got a second book for you. The second time I heard of this was in Matt Fitzgerald's book, Brain Training for Runners, and it was on page, page 55. Let's find this, page 55. Here we go, bada bada bing, bada boom. Heat accumulation, right here, page 55. Only 25% of the energy that the muscles release during running is used for muscle contractions. The other 75% is lost as heat. So are Hutchinson and Fitzgerald talking about the same thing, or are they just estimating the same number? Is it like bad gossip where a falsification just gets repeated and repeated and repeated until everybody believes that it's true, and that's why this 25% number is so hardcore believed by everybody? I don't know, let's look into it. Now, if you looked at these two quotes a little bit closer, you would have noticed that Hutchinson talks about calories that we eat, whereas Fitzgerald talked about energy in the muscles. Are these the same thing? Are they talking about the same thing or are they different? And maybe they are different, but that's besides the point because it's still a 25% efficiency rate. It's kind of like which came first, the chicken or the egg? Doesn't really matter because we're still having scrambled eggs for breakfast either way. So, do we actually lose 75% of energy towards heat loss? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know how to phrase that sometimes. The language around this whole conversation is so touchy. When I brought up this topic on the Matchbox podcast, they lit me up because of the words that I used. Listen to this tip, tidbit. Right. It Are will. you answering my question? <laughs> yes. Well, so, so Drew, what do so you do? I don't know. I, I think I'm more the one confused, part, buddy. Drew, I think the one part that you maybe misspoke on was you said if you're eating 100 calories, then 75 of those calories are going directly to thermoregulation. Yeah. Um, I, it's, there, it's the actually, language think, is real tricky. 
So yeah. you said yeah. dealing so with not, heat. I not, think the correct way to say it would be lost as heat. Lost as heat. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, but I think it's it's not it's not the hundred calories that you're eating. It's it's that seventy five percent of the energy burned or used is going towards it is lost as heat. To clarify, it is not dealing with heat, but lost as heat. I guess there's a big difference between those two words that I don't quite understand, but obviously the language here is important. Lost as heat, not dealing with heat. Big no-no. I do have to admit that I think this may all be a bit of a miscommunication between myself and the bike memes page on Instagram. My mentioning this 25% inefficiency number in the middle of a heat training clip on Instagram doesn't exactly fit. The heat that our bodies create in energy metabolism and the heat that our bodies have to withstand in the middle of the summer when we're training are two different things. So, my bad. Um, yeah, that's on me. It didn't fit that video. However, the fact that our bodies are only 25% efficient is still completely true, which is the whole point of this video in the end. In this review article on thermal regulation during exercise in the heat from the SportsMed publication, the very first sentence in this article mentions this 75% number. The very first sentence, come on. As a result of the inefficiency of metabolic transfer, over 75% of the energy that is generated by skeletal muscle substrate oxidation is liberated as heat. But what I want to know is how. How did we get to this 25%, 75% ratio? I want to know how we got that number. And I kept coming across it and coming across it and coming across it, and it took me forever to get to the bottom of it. It's like everybody knows it, but nobody explains it. And after a lot of time trying to get to the bottom of it, I realized that the answer was in one of the first sources that I had looked at. In Hutchinson's book, the research article that he cites for that quote is from a 1930 article by a guy named Francis Benedict. And the name of that study slash book is Muscular Work, a metabolic study with special reference to the efficiency of the human body as a machine. So after going in one big circle and ending up right back where I started, I realized that this was the study on the topic where we originally got that 25% efficiency number. And so now we get the answer to how did he do it? Finally, there are two crucial numbers in this whole equation. You've got the total energy that the machine produces or the bike and then you've got the total amount of energy that the human has to use to create that bike energy. And how you measure these two things is where it gets a little complicated. On a cycle ergometer, basically like the equivalent of a power meter of which we have on all of our bikes nowadays, on a cycle ergometer, they can measure the total energy in watts that the bike was producing. Now on the human side of it, it gets a little more complicated. The way they measure this is by carbon dioxide and oxygen output. And so if you totally capture every bit of air that the person is breathing in and breathing out, you can measure the carbon dioxide and we can know from different values of how much carbon dioxide is produced based on how many carbs, protein, and fat your body is using. And after some math, you can get to how much energy your body is using. In a perfect world, 100% of the energy that our body is producing would go straight into the bike and would propel us forward. But unfortunately, our bodies are not that efficient. And when you look at the total bike energy versus the total human energy expended, you get, drum roll please, a one to four ratio, meaning our bodies have to work four times harder to produce the energy into the bike. That's a 25% efficiency. Done. Now, if we take a step back, this totally makes sense. Let's look at two scenarios that we all go through in our training. Training in the cold, 
Well, it's so hard to dress for cold weather because you know that 15 minutes into the ride, you're gonna be hot. And so, but you don't wanna be cold for the first 15 minutes and underdress, so you end up, what I end up doing is wearing a vest and then end up carrying that vest with me for the whole rest of the ride after the first 15 minutes. Well, all of that is because our bodies generate heat. Even when we're pedaling at a normal intensity in those first 10 or 15 minutes of a cold ride, and that's why our bodies can still get pretty warm even in the middle of the winter in the middle of riding outside in the cold because of how much heat our bodies produce when we burn energy to go into the pedals. 25% is going into the pedals and 75% is getting creating heat within our bodies, getting lost as heat in our bodies. Second scenario is when we're on the trainer. You do one hour on the trainer and do a little bit of intensity, like maybe a few tempo intervals, and you get off the trainer and there's like a swamp of sweat under your trainer. Why is that? That's because you've taken out the cooling effect of the wind, and when you do that, we really do see how much heat our bodies create and generate and lose while we're riding bikes via that puddle of sweat under our bikes. Both of these show us how inefficient our bodies are and how much heat is produced. Now, if you know anything about thermodynamics, you know that the first law of thermodynamics is that heat does not just get created. It has to come from somewhere. It is not lost. Something like that. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying. And so that that heat that's just happening in our bodies, it's taking energy to create that heat. And we would much rather see that energy going into the pedals rather than being used as heat, but that's just the inefficiency of our bodies. And if you or any of your cycling buddies are looking for a cycling coach, be sure to check out Ignition Coach Co, where we are developing coaches, connecting athletes.